we're getting official statements from the companies that were present at today's White House meeting with President Biden, the Vice President, and the Treasury Secretary to discuss the state of the economy. Those statements all call the conversation constructive and productive. But I spoke with uh, one attendee for a readout of the meeting and sort of the run of show to get you a little behind the scenes detail of exactly what was discussed. This person said that the president opened the meeting with a roughly 15 minute speech talking about the need to combat the virus and shore up the economy at the same time that President Biden talked about the importance of jobs, 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 and bringing the economy back for those hurting most. That on stimulus, he signaled that he was open to continuing discussions with both sides of the aisle, that he wasn't rigid in his proposal and wanted to pursue something that had broad support, that he wasn't just pushing through. He said progress needs to be made on immigration, infrastructure, and closing the skills gap. And as for the messages communicated by each of the CEOs individually, I'm told Sonia Single, the CEO of Gab, said that retail workers are two-thirds women, two-thirds minority, and so she she sees up close those who proportionally are being hurt most, and they are still being hurt. Doug McMillan of Walmart was thanked for the company's participation in the vaccine rollout, and he also said that growing wages will be important, said Walmart is working on that. The Lowe's CEO talked about the hiring that his company is doing, and Jamie Dimon, the J.P. Morgan Chase CEO, talked about the need for sound policy on immigration, health care, and infrastructure, and that with good policy, the economy will grow, and that will lift the fortunes of the largest number of Americans. Finally, Melissa, of course, we know President Trump hosted many of me these meetings uh, during his four years in office with CEOs from a wide variety of industries. And I asked this attendee what was different in engaging with the Biden administration from engaging with the Trump administration. Uh, and the readout was that in this meeting, the CEOs were not asked for anything in return. <laughs> Melissa, back to you. Imagine that. Kayla, thank you. Kayla Tashi in Washington with the with the latest there. Um, it seems like a foregone conclusion, Tim, that stimulus is going to pass. Is that right? In terms of the markets. I think Tim is frozen because he's not blinking. I'm going to guess that he's frozen. Yep, he is. <laughs> 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 the not blinking thing really gives it away. Uh, Guy, tell me, is it, is it a foregone conclusion in the markets that stimulus will in fact pass, even though the president is now hosting CEOs here to get their feedback? I believe so. I mean, it certainly appears that way in terms of the move in the bond market. Number one, the, the, you know, the continued decline now in the U.S. dollar after a brief rise. Number two, and obviously the way the equity market is traded, specifically the Russell, I mean, the move in the Russell is, is outstanding. It's a bit ridiculous. I'm sure James can speak to that. But I think all those things point to the fact that the market seems to conclude that this will pass in one way, shape or form. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.